So we've come down to see Robin Clever, see how he's getting on with his build. Last time we were here he was putting in the slab, the foundation, shutter work now, and it seems he's come on a pace, so we're going to let Robin give us an update. Hi Roger, hi viewers, how you doing? Um, right, we're going to have a little walk around site and uh, pick up where we left off. So the last time we were here, we were doing groundworks, it was a messy old job, it's still a messy old job, but the slabs are in now, so the piled rafts are in. Um, there's about 250 square metres, including a pool shell. So it, it does actually look quite impressive now. So we'll have a wander up and see where it's at. So, here we are. The house, the original house is still there in its full glory. Not for long, mind, because obviously it's going to be remodelled from top to bottom. But you can see on the left, the, the, the edge of the slab. We'll have a little wander up there. So if we look here at this slab, how the system works, it's quite good. I mean, we can't do traditional foundations here. We've got trees, we've got clay. It's just so hard to quantify. So what we've got is we've got a series of piles which are set round about two foot in from the perimeter and then there's some in the middle to sort of take the load of the slab. And then off the top, underneath the um, raft, is a product called Pecavoid. This is basically a grid of polystyrene with what looks like a plastic top, a little bit like um, the protection we use on site, the thin protection plastic, but it's a little bit thicker. So the idea is, the guys shut it all round once the piles are in, put the Pecavoid in, the steel workers came along and they put two layers of steel, rebar, all kinds of reinforcement in different places for point loads. And then the concrete team came in, pumped the concrete and formed the slab. So it's a very, very simple solution to, to bad ground as opposed to having a, a ring beam on piles. Um, it's, it's now ready to build. So we've got, got a course of concrete blocks, a special co concrete block to go around the edge and then the timber frame will fix to that. What's special about those concrete blocks? It's the dimensions and they're 10 newtons yeah. um, and the dimension of them is 140, 140, 440 as opposed to like a normal 215 mil tall block. Yeah. Um, so they, they're exactly the, the thickness of the timber frame. Yeah. Um, so that will run right around the perimeter. I'll just explain to our viewers, if you will, um, what 10 Newton metres means to, to those uh, who don't know. Okay, so um, if you go and buy a, a typical lightweight block, generally it's 3.6 kilonewtons is the lightest sort of one you're going to get. Ideal for internal skins, semi-low bearing in, 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 in a whole wall. Um, then you go up to 7.2, which is more commonly used everywhere now. And a 10.6 is just a bit more of a denser concrete, a bit like the old fashioned concrete blocks. So um, they're, 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 they're denser, um, so they're a lot more stronger. So they'll take a fixing better, especially when we're putting sole plates down and that sort of stuff. Okay, good. And this is the other slab. This is the big slab here. So this is the, this will be the living area, shower room, off the bedroom. And the third slab at this level is here. So this is going to form a utility room, boot room, downstairs cloak room and the door to get down to the garages at the other end. Right, so what's this bit of blue coming up. Right, so new water main in and then we've got a water main that's coming out which is going to go all the way up the garden to the leisure room, to the garden room. Right, how far is that up there then? It's about 65 metres. Okay, and you're going to hand dig that obviously? Well we, we'll use our small excavator, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also running a 63 mil gas main all the way as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you? Which is going to be back to the street, yeah. all the way up, tees off to pick the house up. Can you do that or do you have to get the gas board in to do it? We'll lay the pipe, yeah. expose where any joints are, then the gas board will come along, they'll do the joints and then they'll commission it. But they'll only commission it out the ground, from out where it comes out the ground, we'll then take our, we'll go up in cast then, like a cast iron okay. um, barrel. So this is the top slab. This is slightly different to the others in terms of a little bit more engineering went into this. So this is 300 mil thick raft. And when I sort of asked them why, it's obviously to do with the dimensions of the slab are quite big. And also 
there's not a lot of weight in the building above so the building gets anchored down to it so it actually it's a bit like um restraining the building okay stop it blowing away yeah hopefully and this is obviously you've got a lot of trees around here so hence that we have yeah i mean foundation job you did yeah i mean it's been interesting because when we excavated here to get this um pool shell in we had to go down another 700 mil because underneath there's a void again the pecker void and on top of that there's an insulation 300 mil of insulation and then you've got a 300 mil thick concrete raft which is in the bottom of the pool because the pool is low bearing and the piles are underneath the pool as well so there's six piles underneath that pool okay so when we excavated here as i say we had to go down quite a way so you see this large oak here, we, we found no roots at all. We didn't even find anything small. And it's partly because the clay underneath here is absolutely solid. And the trees will always take the easiest route. So in our case, that's the first sort of six or eight hundred. So the tap roots are obviously going quite a way down, but they can burrow themselves down no problem. But everything else is quite near the surface and quite away from where we were, which is fortunate. So. We've had quite a few trees out, mind. Have you? Yeah. How are they about that, the planning? Um, this used to be oak plantation, this whole area, okay. some years ago. Not just oak plantation, but there was a lot of other different types of trees as well. And because of that, there's no TPOs on any of the trees yeah, here. Tree preservation orders. Yeah, no tree preservation orders. And we're outside of um, the green belt, we're on the edge of the green belt, and also just on the edge of the um, area of outstanding natural beauty. In a couple of weeks time, we've got the first of the timber frame arrive, which is for this building. Obviously being at the back, we need to cart it all through. So it's a traditional timber frame, insulated panels, not, not sips, but it's a um, timber frame. The walls come in insulated. Then we've got a glue down roof frame, which is quite interesting. Some really big sections um, because we, did, we wanted to build it without any internal walls. So we could decide where we have them later on. Um, glue lamb, hips, valleys, ridges and four trusses that all meet onto a post in this corner. So it's quite an, another quite big bit of engineering here. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting okay. that all up. So you're going to carry on during the winter? We are. You're not going to worry about the bad weather? No, because... That's what I like to see. Yeah, because you know we're in England so you can have sun one day and snow the next. So it's, it's just not worth uh, worrying about, I don't think.